Anyone who's visited Herons, our nursery, is immediately struck by the feeling of peace and calm that you get as soon as you step in. And especially when you wander around to our gardens here, they will immediately feel tranquil and ever so restful. This has taken quite a lot of thought and creativity to achieve these effects. Many people seem to think that the gardens just happen. But like most gardens, however simple, are always planned. Some people think that you've just got to have a few rocks, have some lanterns and some niwaki or Japanese garden trees and it will look like a Japanese garden. But it is a little more than that. So the creation of these gardens does take some thinking behind it. One of the very basic features of a Japanese garden is the feeling of space and openness. So when you see these acres of space, the space is deliberately left there. There are people who refer to the space as negative space, but I don't think there's anything negative about it. It is very much positive. It's a deliberate act of creating space to give the feeling of restfulness and openness. So this is our garden which has been created over many, many years. It started back in 1991 when we built our second greenhouse complex. And because we had to store the rainwater from the greenhouses, we built an underground tank and the overflow from the underground tank goes into the pond. So this is really a glorified soak away or a receptacle for the rainwater. But centered around the pond, we have built this very nice, peaceful Japanese garden. I know that a lot of people will say that, oh yes, this is not a typical Japanese garden. You've got to go to Japan to see typical Japanese gardens. But what they don't appreciate uh, is that most gardens, even bonsai, Japanese gardens and bonsai are no different. You don't have to mimic and ape everything that the Japanese do. I'm wearing this uh, you know, top, which is very Japanese. Although I'm not Japanese, I like to feel that way. And it's a nice feeling to have. So we respect and uh, salute the Japanese for giving us the insight into that peacefulness and the uniqueness that Japanese gardens create. So I'm going to take you around um, and show you how we created this garden. But before I do that, I will also show you our center. About nine or ten years ago, we decided to build a center for learning and teaching the oriental arts. So we use this space here which is a very large space. As you can see, it is made in typical Japanese fashion. I designed the interior and also this outline of the building. And this was constructed in 2010 and opened in 2011. So it's only like eight or nine years old. But it is a classic Zen meditation hall. Some people call it a dojo because we've had martial arts people come here. So we use it for meditation for Tai Chi, yoga workshops, and also for dance and movement classes. And this beautiful space looks out onto the Japanese garden beyond. And it's all part of the ethics and the uh, aesthetics, I would say, both ethics and the aesthetics of bringing the outside space inside and making the inside space part of the outside environment. So this is also part of how we create this Japanese garden feeling of space and tranquility. So we will now take you around the garden and show you the different aspects of the garden. I will also show you pictures that I have dug out from 
1991 when we first started making the garden. So you can see the still pictures of how the garden started. Many of the plants have grown enormously in the last 28 years or so. So the garden has changed quite a lot. So we will take a little tour and I will explain to you what goes into the making of this garden. Every Japanese garden has three essential features. And those three essential features are plants, rocks, and water. So in this garden, you'll find all those three elements in great abundance. So there are all these lovely plants, including those Japanese garden trees. There are rocks subtly placed in different positions. And of course, water. Of course, Japanese gardens that don't have actual physical water, they have gravel which simulates water. So those three elements are absolutely crucial to the making of a Japanese garden. And the Japanese ornaments like the lanterns are only incidental. I wouldn't say that they're absolutely essential. I should also point out, if we look in the background, all these tall trees, in the summertime, they are dense and green. In the winter time, because they are all deciduous trees, we just see the tracery of branches and you can look through the garden. And those trees in the background is what we call the borrowed scenery. They act as the backdrop to the lovely garden and it screens out the distraction from the back so the garden is enclosed in this beautiful framework of the background trees and this is what you see. The eye is just attracted to the garden. So this is how the garden was conceived and made and I hope you will enjoy these different pictures I've shown you from the past or I will show you of how the garden was constructed, all the different elements and you will see the elements of the rocks and plants and trees that go to make up this very restful and peaceful garden. So if ever you come to Herons, please ask to see this garden and you can walk around this garden. Here's the 18th of June and sorry if I'm not wearing my Hawaiian shirt but I'm actually doing hard physical labor and the reason why I'm in my waders is because I'm cleaning the pond. Each year I clean the pond out and I go in and get all these weeds out and as you can see all this has been just pulled out because there's a lot of blanket weed and other rubbish that has to be cleared. It's like weeding any garden, the pond is no different and if you let it grow too much it gets completely covered up and uh, you won't be able to see much. I still have to clear some of it. I will leave some because the fish hide underneath it. We have a lot of herons here and the herons catch the fish. So I leave some of this blanket weed so that the fish can hide underneath. And we've been tidying up there. My Japanese irises are beginning to bloom. And uh, I will show you tomorrow how we deal with that waterfall area. That wisteria has to be pruned. I pruned some of the maples. And there you go. This is another side of our activity, the landscaping side that you don't often see, but uh, this pond was made in 1991 and uh, we're very proud of it. It is really just a soak away for collecting the water that runs off our uh, greenhouses. Uh, and a lot of people like it and it gives an added dimension to the nursery. So I will continue tomorrow by pruning some of that wisteria and exposing the waterfall. So this is a long job. It takes all week just to do this, but it has to be done. I'm going to introduce you to some of the garden projects that we have done. Our garden projects are very much an integral part of Heron's Bonsai's business. A number of you have asked me to say something about Japanese gardens. Not many of you will know that we have been doing Japanese gardens for as long as I've been making bonsai. Again, this is a self-taught activity and I've been doing this largely by looking at pictures from Japanese garden books and just seeing the aesthetic principles and how they're laid out. By the way, 
I told you that the Japanese irises are my favorite flower and I shouldn't be wearing this bright shirt because it detracts from these very beautiful Japanese irises, iris and ensata. It is the second week in June and as you can see these beautiful irises are starting to flower. And this is part of the main garden of our nursery. The history of this garden goes back to 1990 when we built our second greenhouse complex. And when we built our second greenhouse, we were asked by the local authority to store the water. So we store the water in a large galvanized iron tank, which is underneath decking. And the overflow from the water tank flows into this, which is our pond. So this is really what we could call a soak away, storing the excess water from the water tank. But instead of just making a pit, I decided to make a nice pond to store the water. And this is very eco-friendly. We have grass snakes. We have all sorts of reptiles, frogs, newts, and many other wildlife. We even have kingfishers that come and catch the little fish in this area. And of course, because we are called herons, we have large herons that descend on the pond to catch the fish and the frogs. The rocks were arranged by a specialist rock company, but under my supervision. And some of these rocks, look at this large rock here. This weighs every bit four tons. And it's a bit of Yorkshire sandstone that I found from the very first Hampton Court flower show. Uh, all the rocks were going begging and I paid uh, not a lot of money, maybe about 10 or 12,000 pounds for all the rocks. I think there must have been about 40 or 50 000, uh, tons of rock in this uh, garden. So what I'm going to show you first of all uh, is how to prune this wisteria because behind that wisteria there's a beautiful waterfall and if you don't deal with it, it soon takes over. So I'm going to just walk over there and start the pruning. The implements I have are my Felco secateurs long handled pruners and the saw. So all this is going to come off. I'm leaving these sh shoots about 12 inches long because these are the shoots that are going to carry the flowers for next year. But I want to show the lovely twisted trunk, the gnarled old trunk, because that gives character to the tree. So this is the area cleared out and I will show you the aftershots when I've cleaned this whole area up. And meanwhile, I will now show you something else about pruning. This is quite a rare Japanese maple and the name of this variety is Aka meaning red, Shigi Tatsusawa. So I call it the red lace leaf maple. Apparently if you read the explanation or translation of the word Shikitatsusawa. It means a uh, snipe rising from the swamp squawking. I don't know how this name came about, but this is the true name of this variety of maple. The green variety, Eo Shikitatsusawa, is more spectacular because you can see the veining more clearly. This tree, which is about, I would say, maybe three to four meter tall, was planted in 1991 when the tree was only 20 centimeter tall that high as a bonsai and it was a root over rock because i bought it for uh, the fact that it was a root over rock bonsai but the rock is probably consumed by the roots now and over the last uh, 28 years planted in 1991 this tree has become this size 
I like maples and all around the nursery you'll see a lot of maples. But like all Japanese gardens, all the trees and in fact every aspect of the Japanese garden is really for viewing. Although I call this as a stroll garden or garden for walking in, you still need to have beautiful views. And the view that the camera is looking at now is the view that most people see as they come towards this Japanese garden of mine. Now, what has happened over the years, I have not been afraid to prune, but I've been very stingy. I grow this tree for the seed, and they do produce quite true to seed, and I always make air layers from these trees, so I don't like to waste anything. So pruning hurts me very much because it seems a wasteful operation. But then when you want to have something look nice, sometimes you've got to sacrifice it and not just rely on making more and more air layerings. So what is the problem with this tree? The problem with this tree is that I cannot see through it. So what I want to do, I want to cut away some of the branches so that you can see th through the tree. First of all, a glaring feature is this one. This branch here is blocking the view. And I reckon if I remove this, when you cut, always cut the underside first and then cut the top. Japanese saws cut with the pull stroke. Many people make the mistake of trying to cut on the push stroke. All the Japanese saws cut with the pull stroke. There you are. I've removed this branch. And by removing this branch, already I can look through there. Just cutting one branch enables me to look through there. What a difference that's made. And maybe that's the only branch I need to cut. But I also know that looking from the other side, these low branches are nice because they hang over the water, but I think I need to take one of them off. So I will, rather than wait too long, I may just cut this one off. And then this one, I will just head it back a little bit with the loppers. I'm not going to do anything drastic because I want to preserve as much as possible. Too late, I can't do any air layering because we did have an air layering workshop not so long ago. That was hanging over too much. I think it was also getting in the way of me walking around the pond. So I removed that and that. And I think I might cut that, but just a tiny branch there. And maybe even this one. So I haven't cut a great deal, but I think that's sufficient to give me a new view or perspective through the tree. So this is all I cut off. You can make cuttings from it, but if you can see, the object is to be able to look through the tree now. and. I think it's quite a nice view. The secret is to show the trunk. As in bonsai, you need to show the trunk, which is like the body of the tree. Showing the trunk makes a big difference. So this is what I've done. Just cutting a couple of branches off enables me to look through the tree and get a view of the pond. Showing a little bit of the scenery behind is part of the art in Japanese gardening. 
you always show a little bit. It's like the dance of the seven veils. You don't want to show everything in one go. You take off one bit at a time until you reveal all. So in Japanese gardens, we always show a little bit, half hidden here, you walk here, you see something else, and then that's also hidden, and then you see something more. So this is the secret of showing bits of the garden so that different perspectives are enjoyed as you walk through the garden. I'm also going to work on this large pine, but this is going to be the subject of a separate DV, uh, video, YouTube video, showing how to prune the garden pines. So I hope you've enjoyed what I've shown here, but I will show you more views of the garden when it's finished.